from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowitzki. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Paul Peck, along with Hall of Fame bowler Sue Nowitzki, and welcome to this special edition of Beat the Champ. We have had a lot of fun over the last five years taking this sport to another level, seeing all the outstanding bowlers in Western New York, and seeing the reaction from the bowling community has been great as well. Absolutely. There's so many great bowlers in this community that don't do this for a living, but still come out here and perform on the weekends as if they do do it for a living. And, um, you know, and as far as the community goes, I get so much input from everyone, and we have seen so many great matches throughout the years that it's fun to actually look back and see a couple of them from time to time. All right, so here we go. It's the best of Beat the Champ. I'm here on Beat the Champ with our returning champion, Pete Maduri. Put on a great show for us last month. Tell us a little bit about the challenges of changing houses while you're the champion. Yeah, I actually like the old wood a lot with my ball speed. I'm um, going to have to make some adjustments today. Um, I do struggle at this house here and there. I know the scores are usually very high, so I'm um, going to have to adapt quick, and hopefully we can make things work. So did you have to dull up all your stuff? Yeah, if you type it in on Facebook, hashtag Sunday Surprise, there's uh, me with these new pads, and uh, I've had to use a little more surface than usual. My wrist has been giving me some problems, so we've been uh, having to compensate with some surface. So. Okay, so there you have it, hashtag Sunday Surprise. I'm here on Beat the Champ with Rob Piccoli, a face we haven't seen in a year and a half. And I know you're a league bowler here because uh, I've served you before and I know what you like. Long Island Tees, right? That's right, absolutely. A little too early for that though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Is it 10 o'clock? <laughs> so tell me about uh, bowling here. Is it kind of because you bowl league here and you're comfortable? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The place is familiar. It's a nice line that I like to play. Everybody usually plays left of me, so i got my own little niche to play. And it worked the same for you as uh, league play? Correct, yep, absolutely. Yep. All right, well, then I guess you're going to have a little home field advantage here, so good luck to you. Absolutely. So it's match number one with our returning champion, Pete Maduri, to be challenged by Rob the Rocket Piccoli. Always good <laughs> when we get a bowler with a good nickname, and we'll talk a little more about Rob in a moment. But what more is there to be said about Pete Maduri on a seven match winning streak? Overall record here on Beat the Champ of 9-2, and two, and he was dominant. We've seen a lot of other bowlers that have had streaks like this. Kevin Bianco, Dana Vojtovic, Jeremy Zimmerman are the only three longer streaks, but he was right. dominant at Kearns Avenue last month. He was, and you know, this is a big challenge for him, even though he's a great bowler, because this couldn't be a more polarly opposite um, condition. This is a lot more oil, synthetic lane condition, uh, big bowling center with different sounds, different noises, different reverberations off the ceiling. You know, it's just totally different from what he came from. So what's the adjustment for him then? You know, when you say all that, you you're initially you want to say, oh boy, he, you know, you know, can he be as good here as he was at Kearns Avenue? So how does he have to adjust even though he's bowling great, how does he have to adjust to all those things that are different? Well, one of the great things is that he's a, a, a big tournament bowler, so you know he sees a lot of different conditions and a lot of different, um, you know, atmospheres. But first of all, it's going to be equipment. To answer your question, it's going to be equipment. He's going to use a completely different bowling ball than he would even think about using at Kearns. And, you know, it, muscle memory is a thing with your swing, and, and he had to open up over there. This would be a lot straighter. But um, I would say the biggest thing is going to be, um, you know, equipment. Right. Uh, we'll talk a little more about that because I think that's an interesting topic, uh, particularly, as you said, as it relates to Pete's uh, experience in bowling tournaments. But here's our first look at Rob Piccoli from Kenmore, produ uh, produce manager for Topps Market, full-time occupation for Rob, 32 years old. And a guy who bowls a lot here at Transit Lane. So right off the bat, you know, the setup is that now you've got a guy who knows this place, who's comfortable here, who bowls right. very well here. And hey, let's be honest, through an 803 series and qualifying, that right. means he's bowling pretty well. Right, and exactly, it kind of negates the uh, champ aspect because you're actually, as a champ, you're actually coming in full, fully against someone who is absolutely, totally comfortable in this house. 10 pin will hang up there on the first uh, throw for Rob Piccoli. And it's one of the things that Rob and I talked about is 
because of his experience in bowling league here and the changes that the lanes go through as a normal night of bowling would progress. He was very comfortable knowing where to move, what ball to throw, and we bring up equipment again where Rob's going to throw a bone ball that he uses here all the time. He doesn't have to fish through his bag and find something that's going to roll good. He already knows what that ball is. And now we shift it back to Pete Maduri, 30 years old from Tonawanda, national corporate trainer for Dynabraid is the occupation for Pete Maduri. Also talked in the past appearances for Pete on the show that one of the reasons we don't see him a lot in the summertime is he is an outstanding drag racer, um, not only locally, but around, you know, beyond Western New York as well, too. So a lot of his time is focused on auto racing during the summer. And then, you know, when it gets a little too cold to uh, <laughs> burn the tires out, he comes over here and burns up the lanes. Right. Well, let's talk a little bit about burning up, as a matter of fact, his ball speed. He has very, very high um, ball speed which on a condition like this where you've got a lot of head oil, the ball is going to spray, which is why we've seen him come light so far, because he's going to have to soften that speed up a little bit and allow the ball to roll. No, it's, it's interesting that, you know, just <clears throat> the fact that Pete was red hot on a seven match winning streak. Um, you could argue he might not be the favorite in this match for the reasons that you've already laid out. He did that at, on different, at a different house under different conditions against a guy who bowls here more, who had an incredible qualifying run to get here. So as strange as it says, as it might sound, you know, you would think Pete, oh, Pete's going to win this because he's red hot, but that's not the case. You know, and a couple weeks have passed too. So, you know, he's bowled a couple tournaments in between and um, he's made some cuts, but he hasn't necessarily won or been a high qualifier. And that all plays on you. You know, this is a game of physical and so mental. There you go. Nice. There's a good strike. The first of the match for Pete Maduri. This is his seventh appearance on the show for Pete. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Instant replay on Beat the Champ is brought to you by Transit Lanes and Keglers. Join us for bowling, food, and drinks. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. This could be a critical point in this match as you get the update on the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ramp scoreboard. Well, we talk about the importance of spares, but when you're on a condition that has as many um, strike capabilities as this one does, you is magnified when you miss a shot because there's just so many strikes that it's almost impossible to catch up after that. And that's a good response by Pete with a strike in the seventh. Mentioned Rob Piccoli was our number one qualifier with the 803 series. He was not the number one qualifier in the round of 24. And the guy who did that, William Gerhardt, was the winner of our Dirt Keep TV, valued at 500 bucks. We'll see William on next week's show. But uh, anytime you come out and try to qualify, and we had nearly a record number of qualifiers this month here at Transit Lanes, um, you keep yourself eligible to win that Dirt Cheap TV. We give it away every month. Nice smooth stroke for Rob Piccoli and yet another strike. Yeah, Rob's got that right lane figured out. He um, seemed to use the ball with a little more shine to it to uh, keep from going high on that on lane 12 out there in the dry where he is. So he's got it figured out. So lane 12, one guy's got it figured out, one guy doesn't. Will that be enough to determine the match? There's, well, there's still, a, you know, there's, it's still up there. Pete can still come back, but it's going to require um, Rob not doubling anymore. So the, Rob's going to want to put some strikes up on the board and shut that out. And had a lot of pin movement, but just not enough to take the seven out. That is a bad mix because those shots are normally good carries. You know, when you hit a little light and the pins spin all over the place, those tend to carry very well here. You can you can just see as we stare down the lanes how uh, how how shiny they are. Uh, you know the right. lights coming off of it. 
the place looks great. Transit Lanes always looks great. Um, it's it's uh, they do a nice job in keeping this place looking fantastic. And uh, and again, a little different than what we saw last month at Kearns Avenue. Not that not that Dan doesn't keep that place looking no, but great, but about, it's a different style. You're talking about wood versus plastic. Right. I mean, and synthetic lane is plastic, so the reflection is coming off the lights, and it will appear to be different. I mean, wood is what it is it has you know its flaws and it's it's dense and it's <laughs> so this is a critical point in the match here as we hit the eighth frame for pete maduri well he's got to get up on a, on a lane that he's really confused on and he has to strike and once again that same issue of the pins on the left side that's at least the third time there's been multiple pins left to the left of the head well pin. that's I guarantee you, um, he's trying something different, but the result remains the same. So when we talk to him, it'll be um, interesting to hear his perspective mm -hmm. of what really occurred, because we're not there. We're only trying to guess what's going on. Right. Um, but my guess is definitely um, the strip of oil is very heavy, and it's, it's keeping the ball from hooking to right. the pocket. Now, I, I was noticing as I was going back and watching the shows from last month, of which Sorry you did that. an amazing <laughs> job. No, no, no. Oh. Um, and there's a nice strike for Pete. But Pete started off great, and he was in the 250s, 230s, 220s. And in his last two matches, um, you know, under 200. He won at 185, 176. It doesn't really mean anything related to here. That was a couple of weeks ago at a different place. But you saw him lose a little bit of steam, lose a little bit of momentum to maybe not score as well as he did. Is there any carryover to his game well, whatsoever? No, it's all relative. I mean, it's a, that place, because of the nature of it being an older wood condition, the way it breaks down, you're going to you get pushed in so deep. Good big strike. That seven pin hung up a little bit and then did a slow motion fall and the ninth frame. And that is going to be the frame that gets Rob Piccoli the victory here. Yeah, that was, uh, that's, he just needs a good showing here in lane 11. Yeah. But, um, you know, back to what we were talking yeah. about. When you get pushed in really, really deep, you lose your carry. It's really hard to, you know, get that same pin action when you, when you get pushed in that deep. So the scores are kind of relative to, I think, where Pete was playing on the lane. Right. So really what's happened here in our first match of our first week at Transit Lanes is the red hot bowler could not overcome the change of houses and facing an equally red hot bowler who is much more comfortable here at Transit Lanes. I think that's a little bit of the summation here of Rob Piccoli's win over Pete Maduri. Well, the trick will be for the day is um, concrete lane. Right. And but and Rob looked like he didn't have any trouble with it. He did. He You're did. Right. He did no, too. No, no, no. He, he did. He did look like he didn't have any trouble with right. it. But so if he is the one that doesn't have any trouble with it, that's going to bode very well if other bowlers are struggling on right. lane 12. Right. And again, uh, Rob Piccoli is a guy who has bowled very well here, and he's going to get himself a win. He'll move on to match number two. We'll talk to Pete Maduri and wrap this one up and get you ready for match number two when we return to Transit Lanes right after this. Two thirty-eight to one seventy-three is our final score. As Rob Piccoli beats Pete Maduri to end Pete's seven-match winning streak. I hope it wasn't me, right? The only thing that was different, other than the location, was me, right? Yeah, you might be bad luck, <laughs> but I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah, but yeah, he bowled a great game, and I just uh, just couldn't get a good look. I uh, thought I made some good shots, but just uh, didn't match up right. So lane twelve seemed to really bug yeah, you. Yeah, just uh, couldn't get far enough right, and then in the tenth frame I did, and it untied my shoelace that hooked so early. So. <laughs> We'll see what happens next time in Fredonia. Is that another little bowling phrase that you just taught me? Yeah, I have a good, a lot of good ones. Yeah. All right, yeah. that is a good one. So, all right, uh, normally Bill Truman would do this. He's a little occupied getting ready right. for next match, so I'll take care of the duties here for you. Um, can't wait to catch you back a little bit, and good luck on the racing season as well, too. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to it, especially after today. Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> Pete Maduri gave us a lot of fun last month at, at Kearns Avenue. We'll get him back as well, too. But it's time for match number two. Our winner, Rob Piccoli, against the Transit Lane. Manager Bill Truman, stick around. We're coming up next. I'm here at Beat the Champ with Manager Bill Truman. 
But he's not here as manager, he's here as bowler. Uh, set the lanes up a little bit for yourself or no? Absolutely. <laughs> Bowling against Pete Maduri or Rob, either one, they both bowled great, so. You know I know better because I've bowled you on television. I know how tough you are and what a competitor you are. Well, I try. I give it the best I can. Uh, nobody ever likes to lose. Uh, if we happen to carry, uh, I'm looking forward to the day. All right, well, I told Rob Piccoli he had a little home field advantage, but I don't think it's nothing on you. No, I don't think so. We'll, uh, I've bowled a couple games here. Okay, well, good luck today, Bill. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Match number two, it's the real battle of transit lanes. Two guys that spend a lot of time with a lot of success here, Rob Piccoli and our challenger, Bill Truman. And as I mentioned, Sue, he's the manager here, so he thus does spend a lot of time here, but he spends a lot of time managing and a lot of time bowling as well, too. Right, and Bill's a good practicer. He's uh, someone that, even though he does spend a lot of time in the bowling center, still takes time out to... Uh, Throw a few bone balls here and there. So it's this is his official debut on Beat the Champ for Bill Truman. We have seen him on the show once before as one of our uh, transit lanes sort of challenge amongst the league bowlers here for one of our exhibition shows about a year or so ago. So, uh, and I know Bill has sat here and been a guest with us as well too, because he's a, an incredibly interesting guy that we'll talk about a little bit coming up. But it's his first chance to be officially on the show, beat the champ, and he did that thanks to an amazing 799 series in qualifying. Right, which we know what a high score that is. And uh, one thing about this bowling center, and I think you'd say with any bowling center, but especially one this large, um, be very different from pair to pair. Like Bill bowls league here, but he bowls league on the high end, and the high end does play different than the low end. This is uh, characteristically where the open bowling is, so it gets more play. And this section of the house is older than the other section of the house, so being adept at one side of the house doesn't make them play the same on the other side. Right, and as we've learned through the course of the show here things like when one part was built versus another part can sure. make them play dramatically different. We've talked about, uh, you know, the age of the wood, uh, what was the surface underneath, the humidity, the air temperature, exactly. the lighting, all of those things. And you've taught a lot of that to me. A lot of that figures in. So that's a, that's a, that was an asterisk for me when you talk about, well, this end sees much different type of bowling than the other end, and they weren't all built at the same time. Right. You'll find typically through any bowling center, and if for or any of the viewers who go to have their own bowling centers they go to, um, if you look at the lanes in front of the control counter, um, those are going to be the most worn lanes because typically open bowling is going to be where the person can see them, where the workers can see them. Right. You know, they're not going to just throw them on the other side of the house and let them wreak havoc. You know, you tend to start open bowling right in front of the control counters. So those get the most use. All right, so the, my follow-up question is we watch Rob Piccoli, who has left single pins in the first two frames here. Um, is it strictly just they get used more, or is the different kind of bowling from open bowlers versus lanes that mostly get used for league bowling is there a residual effect to that? No, it's just wear and tear. Just more wear and tear. Yeah, wear and tear. I mean, the the oil is put down to, um, you know, bowling centers will have like their own typical shot that's kind of worn into the surface, and open bowling doesn't really affect that because primarily, you know, houses see just so much league bowling. Um, but no, it's just wear and tear. The front of the lanes get a lot of beating from, because that's where the ball hits the hardest, you know, that constant beat into the lanes. You saw the vital stats on Bill Truman from right here in Williamsville. And Bill is a, again, a long time uh, notable figure in the bowling world here in Western New York and a long time notable figure in the hockey world in Western New York because if you're looking at him and you're going how do I know this guy he looks familiar to me uh, he is the man who handles the penalty boxes uh, at uh, the Key Bank Center and he has done it forever. Uh, he's the guy that opens the door and I, I joke with somebody before that tells me that he spent more time with Rob Ray than he has with his wife over the last 20 years. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. Um, he's actually gradu graduated to be promoted to being in charge of, of all of the off-ice officials. So he makes the schedules. I mean, he's the big cheese over there. He is the big cheese, yes. And uh, I was at the game the other day, and he's part of, I heard his name announced over the intercom before uh, before the start of the How game. How about that, huh? Yep. So 
So that's uh, that's why if you're if you're looking at Bill and you're like, how do I know that guy? <laughs> that you, if you go to Sabres games, you'll you'll know the name, you'll know the face. Nice strike for Bill uh, in the third frame. There, our first strike of this match between Bill and Rob the Rocket Piccoli. And don't forget, uh, along with keeping up on the on bowling here by watching Beat the Champ, I, I invite you to join uh, myself and Kevin Sylvester every Saturday morning on WECK Radio here in Western New York, 12.30 a.m., 102.9 FM. It's Buffalo Sports Page Radio on Saturday mornings uh, from 10 to 12. We'll touch on everything in the world of sports, the latest with the Bills and the Sabres and college sports, great college basketball time of year for everybody. So uh, your phone call is always welcome, but we have a lot of fun with the show. Um, we haven't had you on yet, but we're going to have I you know on. when we I have listen had to you. Your significant other <laughs> on to talk about the Buttes and hockey. So um, we, we welcome you to join in and listen Saturday mornings from 10 to 12 on WEC. I know when I listen to you, I feel like I'm sitting right next to you, anyways, because I'm just so used to you know your voice and uh, we have and a lot your of delivery. Fun. <laughs> we have a lot of fun with the show, and, and it's not just Bills and Sabres. We try to talk about a lot of things like bowling and mm -hmm. racing and and uh, like we said, college sports and. Uh, we touch on a lot of stuff because I know Western New Yorkers care about a lot of different sports. So. And you know, you brought up the Buttes and they're um, they've Playing had, great they've this had year. a great run and the playoffs will be at Harbor Center um, this year because they've, they've secured the second position so they'll have home ice for the playoffs so I'm sure they'll talk about that on yep. your show when you have Craig on. Yep. And for those that don't know, Craig Muni, the former Sabre and multiple Stanley Cup winner from the Edmonton Oilers, Sue's significant other, is the <laughs> assistant coach with Rick Sealing, the former Sabre of the women's professional hockey team in town, the Buffalo Bills. Right. I don't know that Bill Truman would have much to do in the penalty boxes of those games. They oh, play a pretty, pretty up pretty and down clean too, game, don't they? Great Speak, double there for Bill. Speaking of clean, that's right. That's two in a row for Bill Truman, and he's starting to find the groove that he, nobody knows where that groove is here, here better than Bill does. We're going to be back with more Beat the Champ bowling action in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. So um, the similarity here between these two guys, they're going to manipulate with bowling balls because Bill's ball speed is a little slower than Rob's is they're they're going to um, be going a little bit right to left, but what's happening as the day goes on, as you can see that these guys are going light, that was another light hit right there, because it looked like it hit the pocket, but it hit it, the pocket. It couldn't with, look like it hit the pocket yeah, any better. But it had very little um, you know, revolutions when it hit, because it just was sort of skating through the oil. So it hit the pocket, but it wasn't, wasn't um, rotating to, uh, into the pocket. It was more sliding into the pocket. So you're going to get these light, uh, pocket splits and that's because as that dry gets drier where he could play it's going to become even difficult for um, for anybody to play out there and then now they're hitting that oil strip that he was able to be, get around the last game so it's going to play out to be a challenge here of, of breaking down that wall of oil that's right around the 10 board, the second arrow. We saw the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram billboard that reflects an open frame in the sixth for Rob Piccoli, and it'll now show a strike in the sixth for Bill Truman. So, you know, that was two, two balls in a row where Rob sort of almost left that same little small split. He had good pin action to have prevent it in the fifth, but couldn't overcome it in the sixth. And that's because this ball is sliding as opposed to uh, rolling. So now Bill moves over to frame number 11. Looking for a double. Got it. So we talked a little bit about Bill having a little slower ball speed, which is not a bad thing when you're talking about a lot of oil. It's actually a good thing. It's giving his ball time to work and not slide. And that's where he's getting the, the good carry. So now Rob Piccoli, 32 years old from Kenmore, facing a little bit of a challenge to have to overcome that open frame that he had in the sixth as we move to frame number seven here for Rob. I want to remind you again that Rob was the top qualifier here at Transit Lanes, but he was not the top bowler in the round of, to get to the round of 24. That belonged to William Gerhardt, who we'll see next month. And it was William that took home the dirt cheap TV valued at $500. That goes to the top qualifier each month in the round of 24. We're moving on to Fredonia's Lucky Lanes for next month, and you'll have your next chance to bring home a television from dirt cheap TV.
There's a lot of qualifiers going on at Lucky Ladies. You have to check the Facebook page for that. But there's a lot of squads. So Rob grabs the spare in frame number seven. He needed that coming off the open. And he's even a little playing with a little bit of the edge there on that single pin spare. So, and there's Janelle Saban. And there's your updated Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard from here at Transit Lanes on Transit Road in Williamsville. One of our favorite places to bring the show to. We always get great crowds, good turnout, terrific turnout here. Um, as we tape this, it's a holiday week, so a lot of the kids are off of school, so we've got a lot of the kids here as well, right. too, which is great. And that was a little bit off the pocket hit, but it didn't matter. He had enough power to knock them all Yeah, down. no, that was actually uh, a good job adjusting on that lane. Uh, He's trying, he's trying to move a little bit back right and throw it a little harder and uh, get back to that spot where he had the good pin action the first game, which is, you know, getting to be a touchy spot. Big shot for Bill here, though, because he's uh, got a 30-pin lead going in the second half of this match, and he keeps striking. Oh, beautiful. Three in a row. Three in a row. He bowls here regularly in the Monday Doubles League and has a 216 average. And then he bowls Wednesday in the Seniors League where he has a 218 average. You know, and he's won a number of Buffalo City tournament doubles titles over his career. Um, you know, numerous 300s, numerous 800 series. Just missed another 800 series with the 799 he bowled in qualifying. And again, slow motion drop on the seven pin gets Bill Truman his fourth consecutive strike. And that's that, gonna, that'll do it. That's gonna do it for Bell. And you know, I, I wanna mention that, you know, the, you see how age does not, is not really a barrier in this sport. I mean, even though Bill's, uh, you know, been around a while, it's almost to an advantage that he's, he knows how to adjust, he knows his game. And, uh, you know, you don't have to throw it, you know, super, super hard. You need a ball that's working and you'd be lined up properly. So we kind of figured when we looked at the lineup coming in here to Transit Lanes with Pete Maduri on the winning streak, but then a lot of bowlers who are good here at Transit but hadn't really been on the show, that we might get a lot of win-loss, win-loss stuff. Well, that's where we are right now. Rob Piccoli ends Pete Maduri's streak, but then Bill Truman comes back and beats him. We'll talk to Rob and get you ready for match number three. Who knows what will happen there? We're back at Transit Lanes right after this. Bill Truman ends with seven consecutive strikes to win 255 to 168. We kind of knew one of you guys with the home lane advantage was going to have the edge. Um, how was it that Bill was able to have a little more than you, Rob? Uh, he bowled great, definitely. Yeah, he's an excellent bowler, and I always see him bowl. So The conditions changed on you pretty dramatically from even the first match, didn't they? Uh, absolutely, like uh, instantly. Yes, uh, so the oil pushed down a little bit, so I tried to switch to a more aggressive ball. Maybe I should have got a little slower so the ball can hook in a little more. But. All right, well, you did a nice job. You ended Pete's winning streak as well, too. Donna, I know there's a pretty good chance he's going to spend that here because he hangs out here an awful so, lot anyway. First of all, congratulations, <laughs> and thank you for bowling with us. Appreciate and we're translating as a proud supporter of Beat the Champ. But I'm very excited to see Bill Truman, who yeah. is a part of my management team at Transit Lanes, take this on. It's All great. Right. We're very well, proud. Rob, you battled him pretty good, but Bill Truman's going to try to keep this thing alive. It's match number three coming up next. I'm here on Beat the Champ with Aaron Magliazzo, a new face. And, you know, we talk about it from week to week, how um, people should come out and bowl, and, you know, we hype it up, up a little bit. What made you come out to bowl? My dad, actually. He is like, oh, it used to be a TV show back in my heyday, so he's like, why don't you go out and bowl? I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Okay, so he uh, he watches the show and saw it and told you to come bowl? Yeah, he said they're starting to do it again, and you should try to uh, take your skills out there and see what you can do. And um, so... First time you qualified, and first time, first time you first time bowling, first time qualifier, yeah. So beginner's luck, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you so okay. much. All right, go well. So Bill Truman will go for two in a row in match number three here. His opponent, Aaron Magliazzo from Niagara Falls. We'll fill you in on the details on Aaron in a moment. But how about Bill ending with seven consecutive strikes to win the last match over Rob Piccoli? Yeah, Bill's tough. He's a seasoned uh, veteran, and he figured it out. And uh, 
He didn't let up, even after he won. First roll of this one keeps the streak alive for Bill Truman with a strike in frame number one. We're happy to welcome in Pete Maduri. Uh, not where you would prefer to be, Pete. I get that, uh, but we're glad to have you here for uh, for this match to give us uh, a little bit of an insight. Coming off the seven consecutive wins at Kearns Avenue, obviously Pete upset here and by Rob in the first match. Uh, Sue and I talked an awful lot, and you and I talked about it briefly. How much the the lanes sort of kind of changed on even as the match went on. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, came from the practice pair. I thought I had a pretty good look, and then uh, everything just went a little longer, just couldn't get couldn't get adjusted quick enough, and uh, Rob bowled a great game, so uh, hats off to him, but uh, should have been able to get adjusted quicker. I don't think it was the lanes, just uh, some bad shots, and definitely didn't read the lanes right. So. Right. Aaron Magliazzo with a strike on his first frame. Aaron is 29 years old from Niagara Falls, full-time occupation as an operating engineer, and uh, he's a guy that bowls regularly at a couple of different places around Western New York with a nice 230 average. This is his debut here on Beat the Champ, and it's literally the first time he even tried to make the show, right, Sue? Yeah. So Aaron's going to be a guy that's going to be fun to watch here. He is bowling very well. Although I prefer, think he would probably prefer that one back, well, wouldn't he? You know, and he's left-handed, which is a different challenge because we saw how the right side of the, li the lane plays. Um, but we've yet to see how the left side of the lane plays. And I'm saying from back here, it looked to me like some over-under. And it almost looks the same what happened there. Yeah, and he, he's got a real strong ball roll. So I think, uh, you know, the left side being fresh, he's going to have to probably close his angles, keep everything maybe a little tighter. Um, I think he'll be able to do that. Uh, he's pretty experienced, good bowler, so we'll see. But usually when that ball gets to the pocket, it carries 10, so. Well, you used a word right now that we use a lot in, in, in bowling and tournament play, and that is fresh. But I don't think that anybody really knows what that means. Uh, explain that just a little bit. Yeah, so basically, you uh, this was a fresh pair, 11 and 12, before we started bowling here on this show. Um, we've had now three righties uh, plus practice, so three guys on the right side all burning it up. Uh, Aaron's the first guy on the left, especially with all the righties being further right. You know, we've had no interference with him at all, so right. totally a fresh, fresh pattern for Aaron. So what do you see as uh, some people prefer fresh, some people prefer uh, the lanes that have already been bowled on in tournament play. Um, where do you stand on that? So I, for me, it's usually I'm actually usually prefer the uh, carry down just because the oil pushes down and then it kind of tames the reaction down. I'm a little faster, uh, a little more axis tilt. Uh, a lot of the guys that are more up the back of it prefer the fresh. They can actually tame the the reaction down just by their ball roll. I can't do that quite as well. Well, historically speaking, I think fresh lanes change faster too. I mean, absolutely yeah. right because once the lanes once you come back and lanes have been bowled on already the changes have mostly occurred and now they start to be normal changes where right yeah once yeah once you get far, as a righty once you get far enough left usually the oil pushes down and then you can kind of make minor adjustments off that um, usually when they're fresh so you know you have completely clean down there so much more violent reaction on the back end part right of the so Paul that's a little bit like that's like bowling 201 or 301 as opposed to 101 where right. you start um, analyzing fresh surfaces, fresh oil patterns versus oil patterns that have already had some play on them. Gotcha. So Bill Truman ran that strike run to nine and then spared in frame number three. And then after Aaron goes strike open, comes back with a very nice big strike in frame number three. So, you know, everybody's feeling their way through here a little bit. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, Pete, it, you know, if you're bowling up against a guy like Bill, you know that he knows this place. He's steady. He's smart. He has there's nothing he hasn't seen on any lane here at Transit. At, at, at Transit, how as an opponent, how do you get your mind? Set for that. Yeah, he's, just, he's not going to make any big mistakes. He knows what he's doing. Just real simple, but just very effective. He's a great bowler. He's always been a great bowler. So um, you got to, you know, it's probably going to take, I'm going to guess, 230 to win this match minimum. So. You, you know what Bill has? Bill has, no matter what he does, an air of confidence. You know, when it, he, he approaches everything he does, um, and I'm not going to say arrogance, I'm going to say confidence. I mean, he just believes in himself, he believes in his abilities. Very competitive, had a lot of success. And, um, you know, that went a little high for him right there. But I think that um, 
he sees this ball reaction that he has, it's going to just make him looser. I mean, his swing already looks looser to me, knowing that, you know, with that first game under his belt. And after, I was going to say slower ball speed, real direct, but at the same time, he shot seven, I think it was 750 in the initial qualifying, then 799 in the round <laughs> of 24. So the action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Instant replay on Beat the Champ is brought to you by Transit Lanes and Keglers. Join us for bowling, food, and drinks. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. What do you learn from watching other bowlers bowl, Pete? What what kind of things can you watch, Aaron? And and if you were bowling the next match, what what would you be able to carry into that? Uh, my first thing would be don't shoot 170. That would be the first. It's got to be a better score than that. <laughs> And again, a lot of yeah, pin action shot, yeah. gets Aaron a fifth consecutive strike. Wow, he can shut Bill out only by a pin. Wow, if he if he runs the table here. Yep. Five in a row for Aaron. Bill's got four in a row. This okay. has been a great match. Here. We know Bill's thinking right now. Just give me a chance. Just let me go up and uh, give me a chance. I was going to say chance. exactly. Yep, yeah, that's what he's thinking for sure. Second throw of the 10th frame for Aaron Magliazzo. And another strike. Pretty solid well, shot that, there. Yeah, very impressive, especially off uh, crossing over there. That's, uh, so, that takes a lot of skill to get up there and throw two good ones like that on that lane. Right. If he throws a strike here, he's going to win by a, by a pin, potentially. He'll shut him out, so no matter what Bill does, he won't be able to beat him. All right, so a chance If he gets to... nine, Bill would have to strike out to tie. So a chance to win the match here for Aaron Magliazzo in his beat the champ debut, the 29-year-old from Niagara Falls. And it's one pin left. This could be interesting. So the KG veteran, Bill Truman, knows exactly what he needs to win yeah. with a tie, right? 246 on the board for Aaron. So striking out gets us a tie. Striking and for the second the consecutive month, a tiebreaker, which you <laughs> guys be a lot more exciting <laughs> tie, though. 176 didn't really. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, great great shot. shot. Still alive. Were you all were you ready for the tiebreaker there last month? Did you uh do you know exactly I what was, was going on with that? Eight. I thought eight would be pretty easy, and I didn't get eight, so we had to <laughs> <laughs> I was running out of steam there after the <laughs> Six matches, yeah, seven, seven matches was getting a little rough. All right, so this is the second throw of the 10th frame for Bill Truman. He must strike on the next two in order to get us a tie. Yeah. Nice shot. Unbelievable. So it's going to come down to the last throw. So exciting. This yeah, is yeah, it doesn't matter if it's on a house shot or what it's on, just to get up there and have to make, you know, three good shots and doing that. Really, this is a six absolute perfect shot here. In a so, row. In a row. so there's the, the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep scoreboard, but all you need to know is Bill must strike here and then we will tie. Yeah. How Beautiful about shot. that? <laughs> Seven consecutive strikes to end it. We are all knotted at 246. And here we go for a tiebreaker. At least we know what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, right. And for the second time in three weeks and second month in a row, we've got the tiebreaker. So explain it again for everybody. Okay, so we're going to do a ninth. Or do we let Pete do it because he lived it already. You guys no, can do it. She lived it twice. Uh, the ninth and tenth frame roll off. So Bill's opted as the higher qualifier, the higher seed to, uh, to start. So he's going to throw his ninth frame and then Aaron will come up and throw his ninth and tenth and then Bill will respond in his tenth. Right. So, so, and then the highest cumulative score in those two frames will be the winner and will advance on to next week's show. So, um, good stuff here. This is fun. I mean, yeah, what a what a clut. Look at you know, I'm looking at the score sheet here. You know, Aaron ends with uh, seven consecutive strikes. Bill ends with seven consecutive strikes, and Bill needed to make four in a row because he knew what he needed to do. Oh, good shot and there's a strike of correction. Aaron ended with the six strikes and then left the pin right. that opened the door for Bill to get to this point. So, 
So Bill did his job, start off with a strike. So now Aaron Magliazzo will try to counter here. First frame of sudden death, overtime, here in match number three. Bill Truman looking for a second consecutive win. Aaron Magliazzo looking for his first beat the champ victory. And the lefty leaves the eight pin. Wow. So a critical spare pickup here for Aaron. And he'll get it. Yep, it's very interesting the way that a ninth and tenth comes out because those strikes can just make such a difference. Like starting out the strike is great, but it still matters here what Aaron does. I mean, he, three strikes in a row put some pressure on Bill for sure. And there's a nice strike here. Huge, yeah. Tenth frame for Aaron. So, you know, it's get kind of like other sports, you know, uh, you know, some. Well, even shootouts give you multiple chances. You know, right. the other person's not completely right. shut Well, out. some golf tournaments <laughs> are one hole, some are three hole right. tournament, you know, sudden death. So. So another strike in the 10th frame here for Aaron. So all he's doing now is just not only Bill's going to know exactly what he needs to do to win, but he's putting the pressure on Bill. Absolutely. Because Bill already has that strike on the board for the first of our two frames here. So this shot's huge. Uh, basically, he's got to match him. So he, uh, he's already got to get the first one. If he strikes here, he's going to actually have to get the first two, depending on if he gets the third one. Exactly. And there you go. Aaron does what he needs to after sparing in the first frame. He strikes out in the second. So, what's the challenge for Bill here? Strike, strike one. Uh, as weird strike, as strike one, <laughs> yeah, huh? Okay. Well, Bill's already done this once, knowing what he had to do and ending with four consecutive strikes. Hey, there's, and there's one. the first one. And basically, if he gets a strike on this throw, it's it's pretty much over. He's got to keep it on the lane. Keep it on the lane. Pretty sure that's not going to be a problem for Bill. <laughs> so this is the crucial throw. Ooh, that was in. Oh, he got it. Yeah. He got it. <laughs> You didn't like it, did you? No, he yanked that a ton. <laughs> that was left of his target for sure, but that's where all that oil in the on the left-hand side, uh, you know, all that oil in the yeah, middle yeah, is. Yeah, just, yeah, stopped hooking, just slid it up, and yeah. yeah. You, th you think he knew it too, didn't you? Oh, he knew he pulled it. <laughs> so just one pin here gets Bill Truman the victory. Got them all, of course he did. Great shots overall by it's, both of them, though, yeah. Yeah, Great boy, man. what clutch bowling by these two guys. What pressure, no margin for error. How much, is that stressful or fun to bowl in those, Pete? It's fun afterwards if you win, otherwise <laughs> it's just stressful, yeah. Hey, thanks for a nice uh, yeah, run last you. month. Good luck uh, in whatever bowling you have left. A good month, good uh, good luck getting that car down uh, yeah. down that quarter mile as fast as you can. Yeah, we we'll so. hope to see a lucky lane, though. That'll be my last one. So all right, well, we hope that we do yeah. there. Just, just keep it under the speed limit on down the I will, yep. <laughs> All right. All right. Pete Maduri, uh, who ran won seven in a row for us last month, joining us here. We thank him for that. We'll talk to both guys about an amazing match and wrap up week number one here at Transit Lanes when we come back. What a match to wrap up week number one here at Transit Lanes as Bill Truman defeats Aaron Magliazzo in sudden death overtime. There wasn't much more, Aaron, that you could have done to put as much pressure as possible on Bill to have to tie you and then to beat you in overtime. Right, just two shots I didn't carry. The last shot in the 10th and the first shot in overtime. That's, how, all, that's all it was. How stressful is it for you to have to watch knowing that it's out of your hands and it's in it, someone else's? It's definitely tough. You try to put him away and you can't, can't carry, and then he closes the door on me. It's, it's fun to watch and fun to be a part of. All right. Well, it was a heck of a debut for you here uh, on Beat the Champ here at Transit Lanes. Donna, you try to it make him feel a little better. It was an exciting match. We have something for you. Thank yeah. you for participating, but it was an exciting match to Thank watch. You. Yeah. Sue, the grizzled veteran over there, <laughs> seems to find a ways to pull more excitement out. A little nerve-wracking catching your breath? Oh, absolutely. This is just so much work sometimes, <laughs> but it's fun to throw strikes, that's for sure.
Did you, uh, I mean, how did you, what was your mindset going into that when you saw that eight pin and then you knew you had to strike out after all? I knew I had to strike out to uh, at least get the first couple. Um, he is tough. Aaron just threw the ball so well. You know, he had one really bad frame where he threw a split. I had one bad frame where I missed a spare. Uh, you know, those were the kind of the turning points. And as it turned out, we tied. And uh, and I was fortunate to carry four strikes, and he carried only three. So and that little one a little you. bit left. Oh, the one I pulled a <laughs> whole lot. It wasn't even close. But it hung, it stayed, and it carried. So hey, taking advantage of the situation. Yeah, that's absolutely. all right. I was Donnie. Chance, that's all. <laughs> So congratulations. I can't tell you how proud we are you of you, the Transit Lanes family. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Right. Okay. Well, it's not like Bill wouldn't be sticking around here anyway, but he's going to stick around because he's coming back to bowl on next week's show. Sue and I will preview that when we return to Beat the Champ at Transit Lanes. What a great way to get things started here at Transit Lane. So, uh, an incredible clutch match. Could you be more clutch than Bill than Bill Truman was down the stretch there? No, wow. That day have everything in it, but at the end to have to come up and make those three shots. I can't even tell you the adrenaline that goes through you. I know I've been there, and it's it's intense. Yeah, well, and it was intense to watch. It was fun to watch. You have now mastered the art of sudden death overtime, haven't you? <laughs> yes, and it's crazy. Like you said, we've never had it before in the two years, now going on three years that we've been doing this show, and now two months in a row, Amazing. overtime. It's insane. Amazing, and it was insane and exciting here at Transit Lanes. The crowd is into it. Their guy, Bill Truman, is winning. We'll see if he can keep that alive. Tim Jensen, Kevin Smith and Will Gerhardt. Those are our three bowlers for next month. Stick around. We're back in a week to see you with more of Beat the Champ.